these things. All that you have to do is you have to find out what is the altitude angle. Okay, so calculate the hour angle from the time of the day, calculate the declination from the day of the year and from the latitude information calculate the altitude angle. Okay, once you know the altitude angle, the uh, angle of incidence is nothing but 90 minus altitude angle. So, you can straight away get the uh, angle of incidence for a horizontal roof. Okay. Now, let us look at vertical surface. So, the calculation of uh, angle of incidence for a vertical surface is a uh, little more complicated uh, compared to a horizontal surface because here in addition to the solar geometry, we also have to consider the direction the surface is facing, whether it is facing uh, east side or west side or south side, these things will come into picture. Okay. Let me explain that with the help of this picture. Okay. So, in this picture, this is the shaded uh, surface uh, is the wall okay, or surface under consideration. Okay. I want to find out uh, what is the radiation incident on this particular surface okay, which is shaded in red. right? And this is your south and uh, north direction okay. and the wall is arbitrarily oriented. right? So, this is north and south, this is your east and west directions. And let us say that at a particular uh, point on a particular day, the sun is at this position and this is your horizontal plane. Okay. And uh, this line is nothing but the projection of sun's rays, these are the sun's rays onto a horizontal plane. So, this is 90 degrees. So, that, uh, from definition we know that this angle is beta, okay, which is nothing but the angle between the sun's rays and its projection on the horizontal plane. Okay. So, we have already defined that angle beta. And we also have defined the incident angle, incident angle is nothing but the normal to the surface, this is your normal to the surface okay. and the sun's rays that means this angle. So, we have defined these two angles already that is uh, beta and theta okay. and we have, we have also defined solar azimuth angle gamma which is nothing but the angle between north and the projection of sun's rays on a horizontal plane that is this angle. So, these three angles have already been defined. So, I introduce here two new angles that is uh, one is what is known as wall solar azimuth angle alpha and uh, the other angle is surface azimuth angle zeta. Okay. So, first let us look at wall solar azimuth angle alpha. Wall solar azimuth angle alpha is defined as the angle between the normal to the wall that means this line, this thick line and the projection of sun's rays onto a horizontal plane. The projection of sun's rays onto a horizontal plane is this. Okay. So, alpha which is called as wall solar azimuth angle is nothing but this angle that is the angle between the normal and the uh, projection of sun's rays onto a horizontal plane. So, that is alpha. And I said uh, we have also def defined another angle called zeta that is what is known as surface azimuth angle zeta. Okay. So, surface azimuth angle zeta is nothing but this, this is defined as the angle between the normal that means this line, this thick line uh, normal to the wall and the south, the south is this. Okay. So, for this particular picture, the picture I have taken in this, uh, this is your zeta. Okay. If the normal is somewhere here let us say, then uh, the zeta becomes this. That means, zeta is always defined with reference to the south direction and the normal to the surface. Okay. The normal to the surface obviously depends upon the orientation of the surface and the direction in which the surface is facing. Okay. And the convention here is that it is taken as positive for west of south. That means, uh, for all these directions, this is the south. So, of on all these directions you take zeta as positive. Okay. That means, zeta varies uh, from 0 degrees uh, when it uh, the normal coincides with the south to 180 degrees when it coincides with the north. Okay, That means, for this one it is 180 degrees and uh, in this direction, if it is facing in this direction, it varies from again 0 to uh, 180 degrees through a negative this thing. That means, this becomes for example, if you take east, east is minus 90 degrees, Okay, whereas west is plus 90 degrees. Okay. Similarly, uh, if you consider let us say southeast. Okay. Southeast is minus uh, 45 degrees, uh, whereas uh, southwest is plus 45 degrees uh, okay, like that. So, if you know the orientation of the surface, you can easily find out what is the value of zeta and uh, remember the convention followed that is positive for west of south and negative for east of south. Uh. Now, you can find a relationship easily between uh, uh, alpha that is uh, surface solar azimuth or wall solar azimuth angle alpha and the solar azimuth angle gamma and surface azimuth angle zeta. 
Okay, so if you look at uh, this picture, uh, this is 180 degrees, this total angle okay, is 180 degrees. So, 180 degrees is equal to gamma that means this angle plus alpha that means this angle plus zeta okay, for this particular case. So, for this particular case uh, which happens to be the afternoon because the sun is uh, towards the west, okay, it has crossed the solar noon. Okay. So, this example is for uh, afternoon. Right. For afternoon you find that uh, uh, gamma plus alpha plus zeta is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. That means uh, alpha is equal to 180 minus gamma plus zeta. Right. Now, for forenoon, uh, the sun will be on this side towards the south, okay. sun, sun may be somewhere on this side. Then you will find that uh, uh, gamma is equal to 180 plus uh, alpha plus zeta. Okay. In such case, you will find that alpha is given by uh, 180 minus gamma plus zeta into minus 1. Okay. So, that is why I have given uh, this equation. Uh, this is the relationship alpha is equal to f into pi minus within brackets gamma plus zeta, where f takes a value of minus 1 for forenoon and plus 1 for afternoon. Okay. Now, it can be shown that the angle of incidence, because ultimately this is what is important to us on a vertical surface is given by this relation theta vertical is equal to cos in inverse. Uh, within brackets cos beta into cos alpha. Cos beta as you know is altitude angle, altitude angle and uh, alpha is your surface uh, azimuth, uh, surface solar azimuth angle. Okay. And the expression as you this you have seen is a function of your gamma and zeta. Right. So, if you know the orientation that means the orientation of the surface zeta and uh, if you know beta and other angles, you can find out gamma. So, from gamma and zeta, you can find out alpha and from your basic latitude, our angle and declination, you can find out beta and from this information, you can find out what is the angle of incidence on a vertical surface theta vertical. And uh, where do you use this information? This information is required to find out what is the solar radiation incident on a vertical wall. Okay. So, both uh, horizontal uh, orientation and vertical orientation are very frequently encountered in uh, air conditioning calculation because many uh, most of the buildings uh, will have uh, horizontal roofs and all the buildings generally have uh, vertical uh, walls. Okay. So, you have vertical walls and horizontal roofs. So, uh, you have to use these two expressions for finding the angle of incidence of solar rays. Okay. Now, let me give a very general expression for arbitrarily tilted surface, okay. any surface, uh, it can be horizontal, vertical or tilted. For this arbitrarily surf tilted surface, it can be shown, okay, first uh, this is the arbitrarily tilted surface and here we define another angle called as tilt angle, okay. uh, that is sigma, this is the tilt angle. Okay. And this is the surface which is exposed to your solar radiation, okay. so solar radiation is falling on this surface. right? So, the tilt angle is nothing but the angle between the horizontal and the surface okay, that you can see here. And uh, you, it can be shown that the angle of incidence on any arbitrarily oriented surface uh, is given by theta is equal to cos inverse sin beta into cos sigma plus cos beta into cos alpha into sin sigma. Okay. So, in addition to your beta and alpha, you also should know what is the angle of tilt in order to calculate the angle of incidence of sun's rays on any surface. Okay. As I said, this is a general equation and it can be used for any arbitrarily oriented surface. For example, for a horizontal surface, this tilt angle becomes 0, right? because this coincides with this, it comes here. So, sigma is equal to 0. Once sigma is equal to 0, this vanishes and this becomes 1. So, you will find that theta is nothing but 90 minus beta. Okay. So, this also simplifies down to this expression and for a vertical surface uh, sigma is equal to 90 degrees for vertical surface because the surface becomes like this okay 90 degrees so when uh, sigma becomes 90 degrees cos sigma becomes zero so you won't have this term and sin sigma is 1 so it can be you can easily find that theta vertical is equal to cos uh, inverse cos beta into cos alpha okay so if you remember the expression for uh, the tilt angle on any arbitrary oriented surface, then you can uh, simplify it to 
other surfaces like vertical or horizontal surfaces. Okay. Okay, so uh, calculation of uh, angle of incidence is one major uh, part of uh, solar radiation calculations. Okay, so once you calculate, uh, uh, that is required because you want to calculate what is the radiation incident on a surface. But in addition to the, if you remember your earlier expression, in addition to the angle of incidence, we also have to find out what is the direct uh, radiation, what is the diffuse radiation and what is the reflected radiation. Several models are uh, available, several solar radiation models using which you can find out uh, direct uh, diffuse and reflected radiations. In air conditioning calculations normally we use what you know as an ASHRAE model, this is the model suggested by ASHRAE uh, based on their data, okay, the data collected by ASHRAE and uh, they have fitted empirical equations to their data and they have suggested certain uh, correlations for estimating these uh, radiations. Okay. So, this is a very popularly used model as far as uh, air conditioning calculations are concerned. Okay. So, in this lecture I will discuss ASHRAE model. So, first let us look at uh, direct radiation. Direct radiation from sun is given by I subscript to capital DN that is equal to A into exponential within brackets minus B by sin beta uh, and the units are watt per meter square. Here A is what is known as apparent solar irradiation and it takes a value of 1230 watt per meter square for the months of December and January. That means basically for winter, in winter A takes a value of 1230 watt per meter square. Whereas uh, during summer, uh, that means uh, uh, during say May, June, July, uh, A takes a value of about 1080 watt per meter square. Okay. So, if you want to do the solar radiation calculations for winter, you can take a value of 1230 for A, uh, whereas for summer you can take a value of 1080. And the constant B is known as atmospheric extinction coefficient and it takes a value of 0 0.14 in winter and 0 0.21 in summer. So, if you know the values of A and B, then you can calculate I uh, direct radiation. Uh, of course, so you also have to know the altitude angle beta okay, because uh, here sin beta is there. So, beta is the altitude angle. So, from the knowledge of altitude angle and A and B, you can calculate the direct radiation on a surface. And the values of A and B are available in tabular form. When ASHRAE gives the values of A and B for each uh, month and they calculated this for 21st day of each month and uh, these values are tabulated uh, and they are available in ASHRAE handbooks. Okay. Next comes your uh, diffuse radiation from sky, diffuse radiation is I subscript D and according to the ASHRAE model the diffuse radiation from a cloudless sky is given by uh, ID, they relate this to the direct radiation. Uh, and what is known as an angle factor. So, I d is equal to C multiplied by I subscript d n multiplied by F subscript w s, where C is a constant and it can be taken as 0 0.135 for mid summer and 0 0.058 for winter. Okay. And F subscript w s is called as view factor or configuration factor and this is nothing but the fraction of diffuse radiation incident on the surface. Here I would like to tell one thing, this ASHRAE model assumes that the sky is cloudless, okay, the, that means the calculations are strictly valid for a cloudless sky. This is this assumption is required because this model is based on the assumption that the diffuse radiation arrives at the surface uniformly. Okay, so it, you, it arrives at uh, the surface uniformly. This is valid only when the sky is cloudless. If the clouds are there in the sky, then diffuse radiation will not be uniform. Okay. And uh, this factor, as I said, the view factor is nothing but the fraction of diffuse radiation incident on the surface and it can be very easily shown that F subscript W s, that is the view factor is equal to 1 plus cos sigma by 2, where sigma is the tilt angle defined earlier. So, for a horizontal surface, the tilt angle is 0. So, the view factor is uh, is equal to 1. That means, it sees all the radiation, it receives all the diffuse radiation. Whereas, for a vertical surface, sigma is equal to 90 degrees. So, cos sigma becomes 0 and the view factor becomes 0 0.5. That means, uh, the vertical wall receives only 50 percent of the diffuse radiation from the sky, whereas the horizontal surface receives all the radiation from the diffuse radiation from the sky. Okay. And the values of C are again available in tabular form. Finally, we have this reflected uh, short wave radiation from the ground or from the surrounding surfaces. The amount of solar radiation reflected from the ground onto a surface is given by I r is equal to I d n plus I d. Uh, this is nothing but direct radiation plus diffuse radiation multiplied by uh, rho z multiplied by F subscript w z, where rho z is the reflectivity of the ground which depends upon the surface uh, nature of the ground or a horizontal surface. Uh, 
and F subscript G W Z is what is known as view factor or configuration factor from ground to the surface. Okay. Again by definition uh, this view factor is nothing but how much uh, fraction uh, or what fraction of the reflected radiation is received by the surface. Okay. If the surface does not receive any of the reflected uh, uh, radiation then its view factor is 0. If it receives all the radiation then its view factor is 1. Right. And it can be easily shown that uh, F W Z is equal to 1 minus cos sigma by 2 where sigma is equal to tilt angle as you know and for a horizontal surface facing upwards uh, sigma is equal to 0. Okay. So, sigma is 0 means uh, your view factor is 0 whereas for a vertical surface sigma is equal to uh, 90 degrees that means view factor is 0 0.5. Okay. So, this is how uh, using the ASHRAE model you can calculate direct diffuse and uh, reflected radiations uh, from the known data. Okay. Once you know these things and once you know the uh, incident, angle of incidence you can calculate the uh, total radiation incident on any surface. Okay. So, at this point I conclude uh, this lecture and uh, I will give an example uh, on how to calculate the radiation in the next lecture. Thank you.